Unboxing, assembly and basic review of the Box Blues guitar. I'm always looking around for cheap ways for people to express their creativity. So when I saw this online, my interest was obviously piqued. But looking at the reviews, whilst most of them were pretty glowing, there were a few pretty negative ones, and also none of them gave any detail. So I thought I'd post my own review. But obviously, before I could even look at the thing, I had to unbox it and put it together. So I thought I might as well include that in this video. In the UK, if you do a Google search for the Box Blues guitar, you come with, with a few main traders who sell it. And the one that comes up top of the list is The Works, who most people are familiar with and are a trusted company. However, a bit below that was a company called Wordery, who I'd not come across before. It was a bookshop, but it was £5 cheaper than The Works, so I bought it through them. And it came well packaged and intact, and very quickly. And here it is, so let's open it all up. Once you get to the actual product, you can see it's really well presented. The box is sturdy and you've got a transparent panel where you can see what you're getting. It also says on the back and on the sides clearly what's in there. The use of fonts and design is really good as well. So if you were contemplating buying one of these for someone for a present, I'm pretty sure they'd be quite pleased with it. OK, let's open it up. Straight away you can see that the guitar's pretty much all intact so it's all been constructed for you. There's very little for you to actually do to get this thing working. We've got a packet of strings and we've got a small package with what looks like pot rivets inside. We've also got the book which has the instructions to put the guitar together as well as how to play it and this has got a CD on the front of it. And we've got a glass bottleneck, which is proper glass. I've seen these made out of plastic, and this is a proper glass one, which is really good. We've also got the two bolts, one which will be the bridge, and the other which will be the nut. So, there it is. So there's what you get with the guitar laid out inside and it's pretty much all you need, nothing extra, nothing less. At this point I want to have a jolly good look at the quality of it because I'd seen in one review online that they said it was cheap and shoddy and made of thin cardboard, which clearly isn't true. Sure, it is made of cardboard stuff, but it's some sort of compressed card which is almost hardboard and very strong. And it's quite thick as well. So I, I'm not disappointed with that at all. And it actually keeps quite in the uh, spirit of what these things were about in the first place. I mean, looking at the history of them, when the original cigar box was used, that was just a disposable item. Uh, obviously, these days they're collectible. But when they were used in the uh, when these guitars were first made, they were just things you found in the bin. So, and this kind of keeps in that spirit even though the printed uh, wood and uh, decals on it are a bit tacky it's still a good thing the neck isn't rounded or what we call C profile it's square but this is quite normal for this type of guitar and again it keeps in with the authenticity and I don't know what the wood is but it's pretty good. Looking at it, I would have said it was pine, but it's too hard for pine, and it's certainly strong enough to do the job. It may well be maple. 
The strings are standard acoustic guitar strings, such as brass wound ones, and uh, strangely they've used the 5th, 4th and 3rd strings, as opposed to the 6th, 5th and 4th, which is what I thought they would have used. However, I'm sure there's good reason for this. Uh, we'll find out when we put it together. The bolts for use as a bridge and a nut are obviously strong and heavy and they've probably got more strength than you need. However, again, it's in keeping with the tradition and the uh, style of the guitar. Uh, the pot rivets I'm assuming are to line the mount holes where we mount the uh, strings to stop them from pulling through the wood and damaging it. Because as you can imagine, when you pull the strings tight, they're just like cheese cutters so they would dig through wood eventually. As I mentioned earlier, this slide or bottleneck is proper glass or Pyrex, which means it'll do the job nicely and it'll probably outlive the guitar by many years. The book isn't massive and isn't thick, but it's very concise and it gives you all the information you need to get you going with this guitar. I was quite surprised actually, because the only reason I ever wrote my own guitar course was because all the courses out there were such rubbish. And this little book, in combination with its CD, do a really good job of getting you up and running with the slide guitar. At the beginning of the book, there's a little bit about the history of the instrument, and also a quite clear breakdown of the anatomy of the guitar, with all the names of all the parts. But then it goes on to tell you how to put the guitar together and how to put the strings on so you can start playing. So let's continue on and then we'll put the guitar together. And unfortunately straight away I come across a slight problem and that is that the holes drilled in the back of the piece of wood which is your neck and runs through the body the holes aren't quite wide enough or the holes are a bit scruffy so you can't push the um, rivets into the holes. This is a bit of an issue if you've got absolutely no tools um, and the instructions suggest you tap it in with a hammer but I'm not comfortable with that. So what I'm going to do is just open up the holes slightly with a file. So let's do that. I'm using a tapered file, so I'm just opening out the hole at the end and I'm not enlarging the hole right the way through. But I'm guessing you could really do this even with a nail file. I've just opened up the holes wide enough so that the pot rivets will sit inside and not fall out, but they're not going to fall through either. So once I've got them all into place, rather than tapping them in, I'm going to compress them in. Now you could do this with quite a number of things, uh, G clamps, a vise, anything like that, but I'm going to use this plumbing wrench and I'm just going to grip it and compress it and it will push it in. 
I think that's the least likely way of doing any damage to the instrument whilst you're putting it together. Right, now we've fitted those into place and they look quite good. We want to now fit the strings. So the first thing we'll do is open them and lay them out so we get the correct strings in the correct order. The first string I'll fit will be the fifth string or the one marked as the A string. And we'll do that by pushing it through the hole at the top where we've just put the pot rivets and the top when you're looking at the guitar and the text is upright. So push that through the base of the guitar and then draw the string right the way through until it stops and bring the end of the string up to the top of the guitar. Now you obviously want to put that through the tuner at the same end of the guitar. Now I won't put the nut or the bridge into place yet until we've just tightened up the string a little bit so there's just a little bit of tension to hold them in place. The next string will fit will be the one marked the third string or the G string and we skip a hole and go to the next hole at the end or as you're looking at the guitar it's at the bottom and we pull it through and take it to the top again and fit it to the appropriate tuner. The reason we've skipped the string is because we, by having one string either side it just helps hold the nut and the bridge in place so we can finish the job without them falling out all the time. Once you finish putting that string in, you can just repeat the process with the last string and pull it through the end again and thread it along and put it into the tune. Now, obviously, we're just leaving all of these strings still loose just to hold everything in place. Now finally before we tighten anything up we need to make sure that the nut and the bridge are correctly located and it's actually marked on the body where you should put the bridge and if you can get it as close as possible to the line that they've provided for you. The nut should be easy to locate correctly because they've cut a nice groove into the end of the net for it to sit in and they've even threaded it so it fits perfectly into place. Now I've assembled the guitar, I can do a quick review of it. This guitar is what it is really, and it's well worth buying because it gives you all the basics you need to get into blues slide guitar. The finish on the body is a little bit tacky, it's got sort of a sticky back plastic feel to it, but this really doesn't detract from the overall usability of the instrument. The pickup sounds quite good, and it certainly does its job but it is a bit noisy and it buzzes quite a lot if you have the volume up. I'm guessing this is just because it's not screened properly. If you really got into this instrument, 
a future project would be to get hold of a proper cigar case and actually put a new body on it. This wouldn't be too hard to do. And you could even then put a new pickup with better screening on. And that way the whole instrument would be completely upgraded. This might be something I'll do as a future YouTube project. I think it's also worth me pointing out some things that are relevant if you've never come across an instrument like this. And the first thing is that the frets aren't frets and aren't intended to be used as such. They're just painted on or stickers under the varnish. And the reason for this is when you play with a bottleneck, you don't push down the strings that far that you touch the wood. The string should never touch the wood. And this is the reason why the strings are so high above the neck or in technical terms, the action is high. I actually saw in one review where someone suggested putting smaller bolts on so you could lower the action. Well, that's ridiculous really, and you shouldn't do that. You'd ruin the instrument quite quickly. The whole nature of this instrument is that it's played slide, and that's what gives it its unique sound. Uh, so if you want a fretted guitar, this isn't the guitar for you. However, as long as you're aware what this instrument is intended for, and you like that idea, this is a brilliant instrument, and I rate it really highly. Uh, for the price, given that it's got the book and the CD with this as well. You've got something that costs you, in some places, the equivalent of one guitar lesson. And just with this book, CD and guitar, you could possibly spend a couple of weeks or even a couple of months getting to grips with what you've got here. Something else I have to mention in order to do a complete review is the CD. And that's very good as well. You've got everything from reference notes so you can tune the guitar up to backing tracks to play along with. And if you think about it, this adds a lot of value to the package because even more than the instrument, learning how to use it and getting a good foundation is quite important and it could set you up for the future. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hopefully I'll get some more similar videos up. I'll finish with what I did literally after I'd been playing this instrument for 10 minutes so it shows you what you can do. Oh,